Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Words. And in today's video, we're going to focus on how we integrate JavaScript into your Power App portal to add further enhancements. So stay tuned. Power Apps Portals provides an amazing framework for allowing you to build a website, an application, very, very quickly for internal or external users. But sometimes there's things that Power Apps just can't do, where they basically have extended this for you to enhance however you wish with JavaScript. So in this video, we're going to show you a few ways we can integrate that JavaScript in. I'll provide some code, and uh, that code will be down below if it lets me do that. And we'll see how we can do this. Let's go ahead and open up our Power App portal first of all. So let me get rid of my face here so you can see this. So first of all, you're seeing my Power App portal here where I'm looking at vaccination records for students from my fake university here. Uh, when I hit the Create button, this is now going to be using a Dataverse form and an advanced web form. Uh, I see advanced web form. It's not necessarily advanced, but that's the name that Microsoft is providing this form uh, that has a two-step process to basically upload your vaccination card. Now, the challenge the customer has given us is if I select certain vaccines, like Johnson and Johnson, for example, I should not show the second dose. Or if I select other, I should show the other manufacturer. And if I don't select other, it should hide. Okay, so that's our challenge we're going to try to accomplish today. So to do this, Power Apps Portals doesn't give us an exact framework to do just that. However, we can use JavaScript to enhance the, the, uh, uh, this for that. All right, so let's go ahead and, and open up our form here. So I'm going to open up uh, back at the portal management application. You'll find this application inside of make.powerapps. Oh, there we go. Uh, and when you go to make.powerapps, click on portal management. It takes you here. Uh, you can also look at my other videos on how to kind of use and navigate and create these forms. But if I go over to this vaccination record, here we go, uh, I have two steps. And the, the step I care about is this first step right here. And we'll kind of step into the JavaScript kind of lightly here at first. So let's go into our Form Options tab for our first step. Each of, each of these uh, steps you're seeing here corresponds to the tab inside my, my model-driven form. Okay. And when I go to Form Options, we'll see at the very bottom here, as I scroll down, there we go, a place to add our JavaScript. So let's go ahead and add some JavaScript now. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and bring over some basic JavaScript to start with and that will kind of show us some of the problems we're going to have. Okay, first of all, if you want to call out to a field, you'll use this dollar sign like this. Okay, now I'm also monitoring the change event of that field. And when the change event happens, I'm firing off a function called on display selection change. Okay, and this is just for one field. We can, of course, enhance this to, to allow for multiple fields also. But I'm watching it. I'm also going to kick off this function at first to kind of level set things uh, and get things kind of set to a known good state. So at first here, we're going to see that, uh, uh, that I'm going to go ahead and, and read a value out. Now, this is I'm setting this local variable to a, a value of a field. By using the .val function or, uh, uh, property here, we'll pull the value out. Now, it's going to be a drop-down box, a choice field. So it's going to be the numerical value of that. You'll see how to see that in a moment here. And then I'm just going to do a little pop-up here showing the value of the field. So let's take a look at how this looks. I'm going to save this off. Go ahead and refresh my cache by browsing the website. Okay, and when I come back to this form again, we should now have the, we'll see one pop-up for, there we go. So you see the one pop up for the calling of that function. There we go. And then now, every time I change it, we'll see the, the new value. Now you'll notice this is the primary key for that choice field here. So right now I have the, 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 the four zeros at the end. If I select Moderna, now we're getting the two, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so we're getting almost uh, what I want. Now, if I want to make it human readable, we can also do that. Let's take another step into our code here again. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and change this .val and, and try some, some different code inside of this now. So let me go ahead and paste that in here real quick just to kind of help us save some time. Okay. And I will take out the val, which gives a value of that, and just say, hey, go find what option's been selected and then convert that to text here. So now, by doing it this way, we're going to pop up the word Pfizer, the word Johnson & Johnson. Let's take a quick look at that just to make sure that's all, that's all fine and dandy. OK. 
Okay, let's browse that one more time. Now, you may ask, be asking the question also, why, hey Brian, why are you calling it up here as well? Well, you'll see in a moment, the reason I'm calling it up there is when I first initially hit the web page, I want to hide certain objects eventually. So that's why I'm, I, it's more for the next phase of this. Uh, let's go back over here again. And now when I select Johnson Johnson, we're now seeing Johnson Johnson up here. All right, that takes us to our next step then. How do we go ahead and trigger certain events to happen in this page, like hiding this section over here, for example? So for that, We'll go ahead and add in the bulk of my code now. And what we'll say is, for example, if we take out the alert here, and then we'll put something like, hey, if the var manufacturer right there, luckily has some kind of intelligence here, is triple equal to other, there we go. Then it's gonna go ahead and kick off our code that we have here, okay? And because my face is in a way, let me get rid of my face here so you can kind of see the whole, the whole screen here. Awesome. Now, we could go ahead now if you wanted to and say, let's take the certain field. I'm going to just copy this out right here. And I'm going to kind of space this out so we can see a little cleaner now. So take that field. Uh, oh, and that's the other manufacturer. So it's not the manufacturer column, but a column that's called other manufacturer. And they, they may have noticed here I'm using the prag underscore. Uh, this is the technical name for the field, and you can find that in your solution. So if I go back to my solution somewhere back here again, uh, we'll be able to find that back there. Here we go. So see these prag underscores here? So this is for my, uh, my student experience one, but if I go to my vaccine record, you'll see all the prag underscores um, underneath here. Here we go. There's my column names that I'm actually going to use here. Okay. So let's take, let's take uh, uh, that column. I think I've spelled it correctly. And let's go ahead and in that, we'll go ahead and take the parent, okay, which is the gonna be the uh, the field, and take its parent, okay? So take the field and the label for the field, and let's choose to show it. So if if it's the, uh, the term other, then let's go ahead and show this. Let's go ahead and take this uh, right here, and then let's go ahead and do our else condition and just paste that in, and this time we'll hot type in uh, hide. Okay, so this should roughly do it. Uh, looks like we're missing, an, or have an extra, we got the IntelliSense added here for us. There we go. Awesome, so there we go. So basically what this is telling us now is let's read out this value right here for the manufacturer. Okay, so find, find its value, and if it's other, let's look for that field that's called other manufacturer, and let's show it if it's other. Otherwise, let's hide it. Again, we're kicking off this function up top here. Oh, let me, up top here, we're also kicking the function off once, so it'll just it'll it'll go ahead and hide that field. Now we could have also also optionally up top just told it to hide up top as well, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and, and go with this instead. Let's save it. Oh, okay, got some got some error in my code here, and that probably have a squiggly mark. Let me go ahead and and find where that's at. Oh, I think I know the problem. There we go. Okay, there we go. So let me go ahead and zoom in real quick. I had an extra close parenthesis there. All right, I'm gonna leave this code up here for you guys to check it out. And when I save it, let's go ahead and rebrowse the website to make sure that we're, that we're cached, uncached. Okay, now, every time I hit browse, it's flushing the cache and reloading it. And when I come back here now, you notice that the, that the function kicked off, so it's hiding the other. And now when I select Pfizer, it's still, still gone. But when I select other, it shows up. Okay, so this is a basic example. Of course, we can modify this function. We'll have other follow-up videos where we do other things like data validation. Uh, we've done uh, elaborate examples to where it will it will uh, do it'll mask the phone number, for example, or, or, or make sure it's properly uh, formatted, for example. You can also use it to make sure that somebody's upload the proper amount of documents, that, are, that they count the number of rows in a field. There's lots of examples you can use to kind of fill in the gaps where Power Apps portals might be you know, dropping the ball a little bit for you here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this, uh, give me a thumbs up. I'll know to make more of these uh, around the JavaScript side and validation and all that. Uh, as you probably found out, if you're watching this, it's not very well documented right now. So this is what I'm hoping to film this to hope, hope, hopefully you guys in the same pain that I had to go through, I'll put that way. Awesome. Well, this is also part of our of our Power Apps classes that we have at pragmaticworks.com. And we also have uh, things like hackathons and virtual mentoring. So if you get stuck as well, let us know and we can help you get unstuck. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.